Hi, I'm Kenton, and I would like to share what I wish I knew about loans and LLCs when I started investing in residential real estate. When I started out, I was very confused about what I could or couldn't do. And to add to the confusion, some of the mortgage brokers I talked with didn't know the rules either. So I'd call a bunch of brokers and lenders and try to find one that would do what I wanted, thinking each bank or lender had their own rules when I was actually just finding the person who was eager to do a deal, but didn't have the experience to know what was actually allowed. So we'd start the process only to be stopped along the way. And I would, of course, get frustrated and annoyed. But before you go down that road of hoping and not really knowing, allow me to explain it so you'll be better prepared with realistic expectations. To start, I need to provide you with some context that may be a little confusing, but I will be short. And if you don't follow it all, that's okay. It won't affect the actions you take with your loan. I like to be thorough and transparent, which is why I'm explaining some of the nuances of this information in the beginning. For the purposes of this video, we'll be discussing conforming residential loans for single family homes or residential investment properties with up to four units. These loans follow the guidelines released by the Federal Housing Finance Agency or FHFA, which means they meet the funding criteria for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Fannie Mae and Freddie are the two government sponsored agencies that support the vast majority of residential loans. FHA, VA, and USDA loans do not allow second homes or investment properties, and I will not be discussing them in this video. Also note that a conventional loan is a loan issued by a private lender and is not the same as a conforming loan. All conforming loans are considered conventional, but not all conventional loans are conforming, as it would have to meet the FHFA criteria to be a conforming loan. Okay, thanks for sticking with me through that. Now, we'll get on with more of the practical information. So why should you care about conforming loans? Conforming loans are normally the lowest cost loans you can get because the government guarantees the loan and there is a competitive market for the note holder to resell the loan. The combination of a fairly efficient resale market and government backing is what normally gets you, the borrower, the lowest rate and best terms, which is why we want a conforming loan. The big news is that you can get up to 10 conforming loans per borrower. The first four will have easier requirements than the fifth through the 10th, but you can still get them, which is what is most important for you as you grow your portfolio. Some lenders or banks may not offer any more than four mortgages per person. So you may need to go to a mortgage broker who has access to multiple lenders when applying for your fifth loan. The big changes to the fifth through 10th loans are, that you will be required to have at least 30% equity for a two to four unit or 25% equity for a single family. The requirements also include a higher credit score, better debt to income ratio, higher reserves, and two years of tax returns showing rental history on your other rentals. These rules may change or get updated periodically. So you should find a knowledgeable mortgage broker to discuss your situation and see if you qualify. If you don't qualify, you may need to get a commercial loan or private money that will provide you with a higher rate non-conforming loan. And then at some point in the future, you can refinance it back into a conforming loan if your circumstances change. Now, after you have your conforming loan, maybe you did some work to the property, you increased the rent, or you just think the appraisal was too low on your first loan and the values are rising, regardless of the reason. If you want to refinance your conforming loan to take additional cash out, which is a great idea and a tax-free event, you'll need to wait at least six months from the date you closed on your loan. You'll probably hear the term seasoned, which just means you need to have held your loan for at least six months before you can refinance it and pull more cash out. Again, the only way to get around this is to get a commercial loan or private money but you won't get around it for a conforming loan, no matter how many loan officers you contact. The next question I always wanted to know was, how do I put my property in an LLC and finance it or refinance it? 
The short answer is you cannot get a conforming loan if the property is held in an LLC. Commercial loans are fine with LLCs, but they will most likely have worse terms unless you are getting a multi-million dollar loan. Whether you put your property in an LLC or not is something to discuss with your attorney. When you do, you should also discuss or look into what the LLC protects you against that isn't already covered in your landlord insurance policy and an umbrella policy covering all of your properties, which I do recommend. If you come to the conclusion that it makes sense to put your property or properties into an LLC, here's what you can do with regard to your loans. First, you need to close on your loan in your name. And assuming the LLC is already in existence, you can do a quick claim deed, transferring the ownership of the property from yourself to the LLC. Here, there are a few technicalities. If your loan is held by Fannie Mae, you can transfer it to an LLC post-closing and it will not trigger the due on sale clause. Freddie Mac does not have the same language. You can look up who holds your loans online. I have provided the links to both Fannie and Freddie sites in the description below the video. So if Fannie Mae is not the note holder and you put your property in an LLC, the lender can give you notice of being in default. Now I emphasize can because I haven't heard of a lender actually doing this. If you did get a notice that you are in default, it would mean the full amount of your loan is due. However, you wouldn't need to worry. You have the right to cure, which means you would just need to quick claim deed it back into your name, show the lender that you've cured the default and everything should be fine. Again, this is an extreme case as I have not heard of any bank or lender sending this type of notice to anyone. In my opinion, if rates start to rise at some point in the future and lenders see that they have a lot of loans at 3% while the prevailing rate has risen to say 10%, then they may start to look up who's holding them in an LLC and start sending out notices. But again, this is purely hypothetical and we are nowhere near that situation, but I'd prefer to call it out so you aren't blindsided if something like that does change in the future. If you have your property in an LLC and decide you want to refinance it, you'll need to transfer it back into your name before you can refinance it. Now, I know my lawyer will tell me that he strongly advises against me doing this and that he wants to review everything, but you can have your attorney do your first quick claim deed and then copy the document to do all the future ones yourself. I edit the document and record the deed with the county for all my properties myself. Although it can be a little cumbersome with regard to the forms required for my county, it can be done and it will save you a little money. I am not an attorney or a licensed mortgage broker, but I did have a mortgage broker review this script prior to doing the video just to be sure everything was correct. And I'll include a link to several mortgage brokers I've personally used to finance and refinance my fifth through ninth loans. And you can use or consult with them for any of your mortgage needs. Their information is below. But also be aware that with COVID and other factors, lenders seem to change the rules all the time. But at least if you have an experienced mortgage broker, they will have access to multiple lenders to find a product that works best for you in your situation. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and learned a little something in the process. If you'd like to hear more from me, please consider subscribing and please leave me a comment about your thoughts and experiences. Thank you for watching.